Hello and welcome to Bolton Circuit Thought for the Day for Thursday the 17th of September. Today's reading is from 2 Peter, chapter 3, reading verses 8 to 10. And Peter, writing to the persecuted church, says, Do not forget this one thing, dear friends. With the Lord a day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years are like a day. The Lord is not slow in keeping his promise, as some understand slowness. Instead, he is patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief. The heavens will disappear with a roar. The elements will be destroyed by fire and the earth and everything in it will be laid bare. Preaching at St Andrews one Sunday, a few years ago, Peter Disley unrolled a ball of string and asked the children to encircle our worship space with it so that the congregation was enclosed inside a huge loop. After using the string as a timeline to talk about events in the Bible, Peter pointed out that all of us were inside time, so to speak, and bound by it, but that God was outside time and not restricted. This was a simple illustration but it stayed with me and it helps me to understand a little better this great mystery of how God is both involved in and apart from our human experience of space and time. One day, as the Apostle Peter explained in today's reading, our human timeline will roll to an end but God's kingdom exists eternally outside this. Now, the ancient Greeks had two words for time, chronos and kairos. Chronos is chronology, the time of clocks and calendars, the time of Peter Disley's timeline moving from the past to the future in one direction. But kairos is different. It is numinous time, spiritual time. It's the Greek word used to describe the concept of a good time, the right time, a significant time. But Kairos has no clocks. Theologian Paul Tillich described Kairos as the eternal breaking into the temporal. In other words, Kairos time is God's time. There is a Kairos, time for everything, declares Ecclesiastes, and a season for every activity under the heavens. Now, I have inherited the Kronos mindset from my dad. I like to be organised, on time for appointments, completing tasks efficiently, seeing my patients at work in a timely fashion. And surely this isn't such a bad thing. I mean, after all, scripture encourages us to number our days. Our time on earth is brief and we're called to be good stewards of everything that we've been given. But diligent clock watching can become more about marking the minutes than making those minutes count. In Mitch Albom's wonderful book, The Timekeeper, a divine figure warns old father time. Soon man will count all his days then count smaller segments of the day and smaller still until the counting consumes him and the wonder of the world he has been given is lost. Kairos could be described as when Kronos stands still or is irrelevant. Kairos describes timeless experiences such as the privilege of cradling a newborn or losing ourselves in the glory of an unrepeatable sunset. Mystics who lose themselves in contemplative prayer meet God in Kairos, wrote Madeleine Lengel. The artist works in Kairos. The child at play, thrown totally outside himself in the game, is in Kairos. In Kairos, we become what we are called to be as human beings, co-creators with God, touching on the wonders of creation. So, Kairos is God's dimension. We meet God in timelessness. But Kairos, to me, must also define those 
heart-stopping moments, those times when we freeze in the face of hideous, hopeless news, those occasions when suffering turns us to stone. The Apostle Peter was writing to people in pain, not prayerful peace or play, persecuted Christians who were crying out, how much longer, O God? Now, we may not be facing persecution, but during those times when we're suffering, yearning, struggling through a long dark night, many of us will cry out in similar fashion, wanting our anguish to end. Last week, a friend of mine sat with his dying son, praying for his release, longing for the suffering to be over. All who are distressed and grief-stricken and lost wail, how much longer? Recovering from surgery myself in high dependency last year, my bed faced a clock on the wall and I was amazed at how slowly the hands appeared to move. Can time really stand still? All who are caught up in pain or disorientation cry out, how much longer? Because of COVID, many folk are worried about delayed tests, postponed surgery and all sorts of other horrible uncertainties. All those whose anxiety is beginning to overflow say, how much longer? And practically all of us are desperate for lockdown to end, longing to embrace loved ones again. We have missed so much this year. We are lonely and sad, wondering whether our relationships will ever be the same again. Dear Lord, how much longer? Can we really believe that God is totally in these dark and difficult times with us? Blinkered by our Kronos timeline, it can seem hard to believe. But if Kairos is truly God's domain, then he stands with us in these seemingly endless trials too. Looking back on my own dark times, it's been when I opened myself to the wonder of creation, when I attempted prayer or contemplation, or even lost myself in childish play. That was when I was graced with just a bit of timeless understanding that God had been alongside me all along. Let's pray. Lord, the psalmist wrote, a thousand years in your sight are like a day that has gone by or like a watch in the night. Your existence in time and our existence in time are so different. You are not bound by the confines of space or time. You seem to flow into our experience when we least expect you. When we ask for something right away, it does not always come. And when we don't ask you at all, then sometimes you surprise us. Thank you for those gracious moments when we are conscious of sharing time with you. And thank you that you are equally present in those times when we cry out, how much longer, O oh Lord? Teach us patience and perception, and may our struggles deepen our faith in you. Amen.